In this video, I'll discuss why Handshake will eat top-level domains. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. To understand why, you need to understand DNS. DNS stands for the Domain Name System. It's a protocol, and it powers the entire web by mapping domain names to servers and resources users intend to access. Every time you type in google.com or facebook.com, that's DNS. There's also ICANN and Certificate Authorities. ICANN is the organization responsible for mapping domain names. Websites are certified by Certificate Authorities, which provide certificates to owners of the top-level domains. There are only 12 Certificate Authorities. Top-level domains are things like .com, .org, and .net. TLDs are owned by these entities. VeriSign, for example, owns .com, and they charge every time someone buys the second-level domain in front of .com. For example, Google.com. Google is the second-level domain, and .com is owned by VeriSign, which is the top-level domain. There's also registrars. They sit in front of TLD owners like VeriSign, and they sell domains. One example is GoDaddy. So what's wrong with this? Today's approach is very centralized. You have ICANN at the middle, the 12 certificate authorities, and today's TLD users. And there are many problems. ICANN and certificate authorities are susceptible to problems of cybersecurity, censorship, and corruption. Bad certificate allocation has led to incorrect domain lockups, compromising internet security. With 12 certificate authorities, they allow content filtering and domain redirection censoring smaller users. Certificate authorities also provide identities of those who own certain domain names, which enables DDoS attacks. ICANN has issues. There's a significant number of rules that TLD owners have, and ICANN can revoke or seize those TLDs. ICANN has a lot of power. For example, recently they lifted the price caps of TLDs by a percentage increase. And the way that ICANN sells these TLDs is corrupt. Recently, ICANN sold .org to a private equity firm behind closed doors for $1.1 billion. The private equity firm is run by the ex-CEO of ICANN. In other words, ICANN and certificate authorities solve a big problem, but not in the best, most secure, or fairest way. ICANN and the 12 certificate authorities make up a very centralized system. The entire mapping and ownership of the internet is managed by a few select users, which leads to corruption. So what can we do about this? Let's talk about Handshake. Handshake is a new protocol that is putting these top-level domains on a blockchain. It's a proof-of-work-based chain like Bitcoin, but instead of using the coins as money, h &S is used to buy TLDs. Anyone can register these TLDs on Handshake. What are some of the benefits to using Handshake? One of the benefits is that the entire issuance process is on-chain. You don't need ICANN to determine who gets what TLD. It's an open system. Another benefit is that TLDs on-chain make it very difficult to censor or get them seized. It also makes issuance very private, since you don't have to reveal your identity when you're buying these domains. What's Handshake not doing? Handshake isn't trying to replace DNS. It's just replacing the root zone, which is the hierarchy at the top. How does Handshake release these top-level domains? Over a 52-week period, which means there's an equal opportunity over time. If you want a top-level domain, how do you buy one? Handshake runs something called a Vickery auction. You first bid on a TLD if the bid hasn't started yet. The auction process lasts for five days, and then there's a 10-day reveal period like a blind auction. All the participants reveal their top bids, and the winner pays the second highest bid. What about the h &S token? TLDs are bought using h &S, then they're burned. There's only 2 billion h &S that'll ever exist, so the blockchain is deflationary. For example, you can see Pseudo was sold for 6K HNS. At today's price of 15 cents, that's worth $900. 6K HNS will be burned from the total supply. 
If you don't win the bid, your tokens aren't burned for context. Why does DNS need a blockchain? The key reason is security. Blockchains are pretty inefficient and difficult to use today, but what they are good at is trust. In the traditional system, the TLS, which determines HTTPS, is done by certificate authorities on the internet today. Certificate authorities are vulnerable to hacking and getting compromised, which means they are a one of many system. If one of them fails, they all fail. Handshake says, instead of using these certificate authorities, the protocol shifts the trust to a distributed system. This means that Handshake provides a stepwise improvement in the security by shifting the root of trust from certificate authorities to a distributed ledger that is backed by a blockchain. This is the key insight that Handshake is solving. How do you prove you own the top-level domain? It works like Bitcoin. You have a private key and a wallet. As long as you have ownership of the private keys for that domain, you own it. Most people don't realize that they're only renting domain names when they buy them today. With Handshake, you can truly own your domain name and no one can seize them from you. Where do you store your h &S? In the Handshake subreddit FAQ, they mention Bob Wallet. Bob Wallet is built by Kyokin. It's a Handshake wallet in a fold node and it works for Mac and Windows. With Handshake, you could generate income. Now that you truly own a TLD, you could sell a second level domain to others. For example, for example owning sudo means you could sell second level domains in front of sudo. Effectively, you could be getting a business where people buy second level domains from you continuously. And please note that this infrastructure isn't yet available, but it will be eventually. Some additional facts. Normal TLDs cost millions of dollars to get. There's a large application fee that ICANN charges. With Handshake TLDs, it only costs whatever the second highest bidder is willing to pay. That could even be $5. Also, Handshake provided a 90-day sunrise period for current rights holders to claim trademark names on the internet, ensuring a seamless transi transition from the current system to the decentralized one. They also pre-reserve the top 100k domains on Alexa.com to provide in their initial launch. What's the Handshake user experience like? There's third-party DNS resolvers. You point your DNS to the resolver and you can view Handshake TLDs. Some examples include 1.1.1.1 from Cloudflare or 8.8.8.8 from Google. Handshake also has a light client resolver that can trustlessly resolve Handshake names so you don't even need to use a third-party resolver. That means Handshake is compatible with existing TLDs. Now that we better understand Handshake, who founded Handshake? There's four of them. The first is Joseph Poon, who is the co-creator of the Bitcoin Lightning Network and Plasma. Andrew Lee, CEO of Purse. And another Andrew Lee, private internet access founder, which is a, like a VPN service, and Chris Jeffrey, who's the Purse CTO. And yes, there are two Andrew Lees. How much money did they raise? 10.2 million from A16Z, Sequoia, Greylock, Founders Fund, Pantera Capital, Polychain Capital, pretty much every Silicon Valley VC. And what did they do with the money? They gave it all away. What? Yes, Handshake gave the money to Floss Devs. 1.36 billion HNS tokens will be provided to Floss Devs, uh, nonprofits, and universities who the Handshake team believes powers most of the internet today. This was funded by the 10.2 million from project sponsors. They also created an airdrop mechanism. The top 250k GitHub Devs can claim about 4K HNS tokens to play around with Handshake. A lot of developers see Handshake as a way to unseat bad actors like ICANN, and they're more philosophically driven, since most of those top uh, developers are probably well off financially and not motivated by money. So who's still involved with Handshake? It's a community-led effort. You can see who's working on the project when you check out Handshake's pull requests and issues in GitHub. 
Why couldn't handshake work? Paraphrasing Taishin in a recent interview, first, you can't have any component of this system be centralized. Alternative root zone attempts in the past only focus on namespaces as a value add, and that doesn't unseat the existing network effects. This solution needs to be decentralized. Second, getting the issuance of names is incredibly important. You don't want squatters or whales buying up all the domains right off the bat. That's why Handshake created a mechanism to prevent whales from getting all the good domains. Now that we understand Handshake, let's talk about Namebase. What is Namebase? It's a domain registrar on top of Handshake. It's also an exchange. They have an on-ramp where anyone can buy HNS and use them to bid on domain names. In other words, it's like GoDaddy and Coinbase. So who founded Namebase? Taishin did. Some facts about him is that he's 21 years old. He's a high school dropout. He started strong intro and he went through Y Combinator doing that. Then after strong intro, he started uh, studying at MIT for math and computer science. Then he dropped out of MIT to start Namebase. Then he received a Teal Fellowship grant to work on Namebase. So that means Taishin is only 21 or 22. What? It's pretty crazy. There's also this concept of unstoppable websites. In a recent interview with Anthony Pompliano, he said, could someone set up a website to publish information in China and everyone could access that website? Paraphrasing Taishin, there's an arbitrage period where just using Handshake alone would be sufficient for a bit. The Great Firewall does IP-based and packet-based filtering. When you pair Handshake with Skynet, IPFS, or Filecoin, it would be very difficult to censor. Interesting. I have another idea. On Handshake's website, it says, centralization exists because there is a need to manage spam, griefing, and sock puppet civil attacks. Previous decentralized systems largely stopped working due to spam. If it were more costly to grief on the internet using decentralized systems, the need for trusted centralized corporations to manage these risks decrease. So my suggestion is to not just use Handshake and decentralized storage like SIA, IPFS, and Filecoin, but also to pair that with Erasure from Numerai. The Erasure protocol has three primitives, uh, track record through posts and feeds, payments through any cryptocurrency, and recourse through griefing. If you're interested in learning more about Erasure, I have a video about Numerai you can check out, and the link will be in the description. So if we compare these approaches, you can see today's centralized approach is on the left, and Handshake's distributed approach is on the right. Handshake distributes the trust across many more people, and I think that's why Handshake will eventually eat top-level domains. My final thoughts is that Handshake is an important step in the development of the decentralized web by ensuring that domain names are properly provided, verified, and owned. Handshake is the best, most secure, and fairest way of solving this problem. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. A lot of this great content came from Taishin in an interview with Anthony Pompliano. If you can, give him a follow on Twitter. He's a great leader in the Handshake community. Also, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.